What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how to understand how clipping masks work within Infinite Painter and how to use them and when to use them. Now what I'm about to teach you is standard practice a lot of the time in most apps such as Photoshop, Illustrator and Procreate just to name a few. And in this I'm going to show you how we would go ahead and add in some highlights and shadows to an object. So starting off I've got my layers up here and we've got one individual shape. We have what I would call our base shape. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and add in some highlights and shadows to this, you've got three options. You could stay on the same layer and we could go ahead and make sure our color set to black. And we would try to meticulously manually try and add in some shadows down here and try to stay within the boundary of the shape and no doubt fail. And it would just run off into the edges here. That would be the first thing you could do and something that I don't recommend. The other option is to use a alpha lock on the layer, but that will be in another how to video. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. But in this video, I'm going to show you how clipping masks work. So if we wanted to add a shadow to this, we would go ahead and go to our layers and create a new layer. And if you tap on the new layer and go to the option here of clip, this layer will clip itself to the one that's underneath. And you can tell because it has this icon here just on the left of the layer, which lets you know that this layer is clipped to the layer below and then I could go ahead and now just start to paint in my shadows just around this bottom right corner here and just fade them out creating a nice little shadow around our sphere and you can see that that's on a separate layer now the beauty with that is if I was to tap on that layer and unclip it all that data is there but that's how you can see that the clipping mask is working if we tap on it and clip it it gets rid of all of this excess around the outside and only shows what overlaps the original base shape. And you can go ahead and clip multiple layers. So I can create another new layer. And on that layer, it will clip itself automatically in Infinite Painter. And then switching to white, we could go ahead and add in a highlight here in the top left area of our sphere and maybe even a nice reverb highlight around the back of the sphere as well. And that's how you could layer multiple layers that are all clipped onto your base shape and build them up to create a full design. Now, a couple of things to bear in mind, if I was to go to my base shape and I was gonna go ahead and move that around our canvas, you will notice that the highlights and shadows do not move alongside it. In order to do that, you would need to go ahead and tap on the other layers as well, and then you can move them freely and they will nicely go ahead and stay together in the order that you painted them on. Likewise, if you wanted to scale this up and down, they will nicely move up and down alongside your scaling. Now you might be asking, why would you use a clipping mask layer? Well, that's the thing with digital art. We have so many tools that are available to us. It's about utilizing them to benefit us at any stage of our design creation. For example, I will always have a base shape, a shadow layer and a highlights layer, because if I want to adjust any of them, for example, my shadows, I can tap on them and I could maybe lower the opacity down of them if I felt like they were a little bit too strong. And you may only notice that right at the end of your design. If I bring them back up or I want to go ahead potentially and change the color of our base shape, I can go to my fill tool here and I can just tap in the middle of our base shape here and fill that in with green. And by filling it in like that on a separate layer, I've preserved my shadows and my highlights and they're ready for me at any stage. Again, I could tap on my highlights and lower them down a little bit. But the beauty with that is you could add a further shadow layer. You could add a further highlights layer. So I could add a further highlight, such as this little window reflection, for example, in the top left corner. And I can tap on that and I can change its blend mode at any time to anything else. I can change it to overlay, where it then starts to look at the colors underneath it. That is a whole nother story for another day, but you get the point. You have free control. And let's say I get further down the line and I don't like that. I can just tap on it and delete it and preserve the information underneath. So hopefully that quick and easy video helped you understand clipping masks. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you wanna go ahead and check out my how-to series on my channel, you may find a video that helps you such as learning alpha lock and how that works. Again, I'll leave a link to everything in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.